Hello, my name is Andrea Pinchetti, and I recently received my PhD from Arizona State University. And with my advisors, Dr. Rita Shankar and Dr. Oliver Cossett, we developed data-driven generative models for bus-level time series load data. So first of all, let's understand why we focus on load data. So as we know, the basic goal of the grid is to serve power to customers. And for these reasons, loads are one of the main, if not the main driver of power system behaviors. So in addition to that, uh, loads are governed by factors which are external to the grid, such as weather, customer habits, and so on. And so all of these cannot directly be modeled within traditional power system tools. So it's important that we have realistic data and models to use as inputs for these studies. And time series of data is used for almost every power system study. But the requirements in terms of, say, sampling rate or time length vary depending on the specific study. So for example, for planning, we need many years ahead, but at very low resolutions. Whereas for dynamics or stability analysis, we need just a few seconds or minutes, but at much higher sampling rates. And as we can see here, uh, loads show very different behaviors and patterns at different time scales. And these, so they need to be taken into consideration depending on the study that we're looking at. Also with the fast growing uh, field of machine learning gaining in popularity, uh, especially in uh, power systems, large data sets are becoming crucially important. And the problem is that, as I'm sure many of you already experienced, large data sets of load measurements are very hard to obtain and they're very scarce within the research community. So in our work, we set out to design generative models which can be used to create any amount of realistic time series load data at bus level, which can then subsequently uh, be mapped to existing grid models to perform any type of power system study. So for the work that we're presenting in our conference paper, we, uh, we focused on load profiles, representing one week of load data, sampled at one sample per hour. And so here we have four examples of uh, these week long profiles, and we can see the expected behavior where the load increases during the day and then goes down at night. But what we also have here is that each profile is actually selected from each of the four seasons. And we can see that the loads have very different patterns depending on the time of the year. And at the same time, we also know that depending on the type of load, so if it's mainly residential or mainly industrial, for example, they will also have very different characteristics. And so we need a way to model and to capture uh, all these different behaviors. So what we do is we use a machine learning model called Conditional Generative Adversarial Networks, or CGAN. So in a traditional GAN, uh, we have two models, a generator and a discriminator. The generator's job is to create the synthetic data while the discriminator tries to distinguish between the real and the fake data. And so by training them iteratively and making them compete against each other, we can very effectively uh, teach the generator to create very realistic looking uh, synthetic samples which are ideally indistinguishable from the real data. But in addition to that, in a conditional GAN, we also feed uh, labels uh, that describe the data. So for example, in our case, that would be the seasons and the load types. Uh, and in this way, the generator learns to create data according to the specific labels that we can then request. So in these two figures on the right, uh, we can see a more detailed structure of the two models that make up the CGAN. And everything is implemented in TensorFlow Keras and the generator and the discriminator are modeled as one dimensional convolutional neural networks, which makes them very, very good at uh, working with time series data. And so if we look at the generator, for example, we have uh, two inputs. One is the label encoded as a one hot vector which represents the load type and the season. And the other one is the noise vector, which is used by the generator as a sort of a starting point for the creation of the synthetic profile. And so after going through the three fully connected layers and the three transpose convolutional layers, 
and the output is a synthetic profile, which represents a you know a week long uh, load profile. And if for the discriminator, the structure is very similar, but simply kind of mirrored. Uh, so we start with a profile, uh, and at the output we have a scalar which indicates if the profile is real or fake. So the higher this value, the higher the likelihood that the profile is actually real. So as we said, the two models are trained iteratively so that they both keep improving until they reach convergence. And so in this figure here, we can see a presentation of the training progress. So for each epoch on the x-axis, we are plotting the prediction of the discriminator on three different data sets. We have training data, which is real profiles uh, used during training, validation data, which are profiles, real profiles that have never been seen by the GAN, and then the synthetic data, uh, which is generated by the generator at, at each epoch. And so what we can see is that at first, the discriminator easily distinguishes between the real profiles, so the blue and the green, and the fake ones. But as training progresses, uh, the generator improves and uh, the discriminator can tell, can tell apart the real data from the generated data. And so what it does is just assigns a value close to 0 0.5 to all of them. And so here we have an example of what the synthetic data looks like in comparison with the real data. So all of these are summer profiles for residential, uh, mainly residential loads at the top and mainly industrial uh, loads at the bottom. And on the left are real profiles and on the right are generated profiles. And we can see that visually they all look very similar and they present the same type of behaviors. Uh, and also, I think it, it's important to highlight at this point that the GAN doesn't, doesn't simply copy real data, but it actually generates completely new samples. Uh, nevertheless, we need a more quantitative way to verify that the, the synthetic data actually maintains all of the characteristics of the real data. So what we do is we use two different classes of tests. We looked at uh, comparing data statistics between the real and the generated data sets. And we also used the data, the synthetic data in downstream applications. So first we measured the Wasserstein's distance, which is a metric that indicates how similar two distributions are. Uh, so we do this between the real and the generated data. And here it's plotted as a function of the epoch number. So at the beginning, the distance is uh, quite high, meaning that the two distributions are far apart. And we can see that from this bottom left plot where we have the real distribution in blue and the fake one in orange. Uh, on the other end, at the, at the end of training, uh, the distance approaches zero and we can see that the two distributions match very closely. Uh, similarly, we also compare the power spectral density between the real and the fake uh, profiles and we can see that they present very similar characteristics. Finally, uh, we actually use the synthetic data in uh, two different applications. Uh, so that is the, we use it to run AC optimal power flow, and we also use it to train a load forecasting algorithm. So for more details on these tests and the results, please uh, refer to our paper. But these tests did verify that the synthetic data can successfully be used for power system studies and applications. And so overall, our work showed that uh, conditional GANs are very effective at modeling load data, while at the same time capturing all these different nuances and characteristics. And so, as we mentioned earlier, load data is needed for many different applications and at different time scales. So we actually expanded our work and we developed a complete end-to-end -end framework for the generation of time series load data at any resolution. So that's from like 30 samples per second to anything higher than that. And for lengths of up to one year. So just from a few seconds to up to a year. And so to do this, we leveraged a data set of real PMU data uh, coming from multiple years which allowed us to capture and model all these different behaviors at different time scales. And so for each level, we 
train different generative models, which can then be uh, recombined together to obtain any type of data, so any length and any resolution. And this was uh, quite successful. So we actually uh, packaged it into an open source tool, which is available on uh, my GitHub page. And so anyone can just download it and use it to create any amount of data at any resolution. So please, uh, if you're interested, do take a look at it and feel free to contact me if you have any questions. And thank you.